sort of okay guys we are back i am so sorry about that there she is <laughs> I was having technical difficulties and it wouldn't let me back in because the max number had changed. Anyway, Amanda, I'm going to mute everybody. I think we're already in. So. Hold on. Okay, go for it. Okay. I bet I, start, I ended with it and so what I did, and so it was like a cliffhanger. What did she do? <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? But um, what I did is I went back in to the Team Taylor New Ambassador Training Guide and really set my mindset thinking, okay, I'm gonna pretend I'm brand new again. Because I remember in the beginning, and granted, you guys remember, for those who don't know me, I, I'm on maternity leave right now, but I have a full-time job with Apple, but it's a really demanding job. And getting that time in to do that, I mean, I really took my lunch hours and sacrificed my lunch hours ate at my desk and worked my plexus business was how I did things. And I remember I wanted to get back to that passion that I had in the beginning of like, oh my gosh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And um, so what I did is I restarted my business and did it again and kept building and building. And I think that's like what Sarah said. It's so key to manage your team, but also continue to grow your own team. Like there are so many, which I thought was so cool, like Sarah said, people that when she hit Ruby weren't on her team. And there are people that were in Kona that, that I feel like they were brand new and they're like, oh no, I'm on so-and-so's team. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you like just joined. That's incredible. And how many times do we see um, those top leaders in there that are people that are diamonds, that are still working their business? Well, that's not by mistake. Those people are diamonds because they're still working their business. They're not stopping. Those people are double diamonds and hang towards double diamonds because they're still working their business. And there's an analogy that I kind of want to address that I think we always say, and Sarah said this in the beginning, that this is not a lottery. However, even if you think it is a lottery, how does the lottery work? Even if you think this is a lottery, how many people have ever bought one ticket for a lottery and won? No. You're getting your butt to the gas station, you can't buy them online. You're getting your butt to the gas station, Two or three times a week, you're buying a ticket. It's the same kind of thing. Even if you think this is a lottery, you don't win the lottery on one draw. You have to keep going. You have to keep working. You have to keep doing this. You have to do IPAs. So I, I, I don't want, I love when people are like, well, I thought it was a lottery. I'm like, well, even if you thought it was a lottery, you're still not doing it. You're still not going. You're still not buying a ticket. Did you buy a ticket this week? Did you buy three tickets this week? Or did you just pretend like, just sit around and hope like, oh, I want to win the lottery. Well, yeah, that'd be great. Are you even playing? Are you even doing it? Like, I think that's the mentality that people miss out, that they're not realizing, like, what are you putting into this business? And I know you've heard it a million times. If you put in hobby time, you're going to make hobby money. If you put in business time, you're going to make business money. And this is coming from someone who, and I, I'm, I say this with, <laughs> I jokingly say this because I want to say, like, because I have a full-time job, and that's really hard. Right now, I'm on maternity leave, and being a stay-at-home mom is even harder. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> I feel like it's insane. So both of those things go into the same boat of, I know we're busy. I know we're all busy. I know we all have a lot going on. I look at my to-do list every night, and it makes me crazy. But I still make time for Plexus every single time. And one of the things, I, I'll say this because I said this a while ago to my team and it helped, and if it's repetitive to my team, I'm sorry, but y'all hear me repeat stuff all the time. One of the things I did when I was um, not a maternity even working with the posts, I know Amy talked about like not sharing a post, every post was original. On Sunday night, I wrote out all my posts for the week. So it was one post every single day that I knew I was gonna make a post every single day. Then the posts of like me and my family and all that stuff kind of just happened but, and, and it was added fluff. But I knew I was spacing out the products. I knew I was talking about different products and I was talking about different opportunities, stuff like that. I knew I had that and what I did was I wrote them to myself in an email and wrote Monday post and I did the body of the post and the picture and I emailed them to myself. So at the beginning of the week, I had seven emails that really all I had to do was go in, cut and paste, and go. And it took, I mean, maybe about like 15 seconds to do that instead of sitting at your desk at lunch and being like, oh, yesterday I posted about Slim. 
what could I post? What did so-and-so post today? Like then you're just copying. If you really take a time, like we're talking about the power hour, if you take a power hour on Sunday night and really focus on your post for the week, it's going to set you up for a lot of success and it's going to let your people hear your voice. It's going to let them hear your story and hear your passion. Um, I know the power hour thing is something that I pretty much ran back from Kona and told my team about and they are loving it. And I do want to stress too, your power hour, it can change and it cannot be during the day. My power hour happens to be 11 to midnight. And my team knows that if they send me something and they happen not to hear from me during that day, it's because something's going down with the newborn or a doctor's visit or something. But guess what? They're going to hear from me at midnight. They're going to see an email in their inbox the next morning because I work my business usually from 11 to about 2 a.m. in the morning. That's when I'm working my business right now because that's what works for my lifestyle. Will that change? God, I hope so <laughs> because I really want to sleep again. But that's what it is now, and that's how I'm working my business. You have to adjust it to how your life is going to work. Um, drawing your line in the sand and mindset. Mindset, I really think, is what got me to this business, got me to where I am now, and has really projected me through this business. Knowing my why, um, if y'all know my story, my why started out that I just wanted to get my hair done and not wanted to hear my husband complain about how much it cost to get my hair done. Now my why is a house that can help um, – my mom stay with us for several weeks on end that's wheelchair accessible and can be there with us. And we are in the process of with permits and stuff in the city, trying to get that house going, which it'll probably be at the end of the year that we'll have that house. But I mean, these are big things that are transforming my life and big things that are driving me. I remember when I told Sarah originally I wanted to get my hair done, then I wanted to get the nanny paid for. And when we got the nanny paid for, she goes, okay, think bigger, bigger. And I was like, yeah, but I got the nanny paid for. That's awesome. She's like, no, what do you want out of life? What do you want? And I mean, it could be insane. Like I want to have all my kids college paid for and the house paid off. It's a big deal. But if that's your why and that's what's pushing you and you know you can do it and you know that this company can do it for you, it will push you. The other thing I love, love, love about this company, and I'm going to stop talking a little and I'm rambling. When you're in Kona and you're meeting these people, first of all, you're meeting people that you've been seeing in YouTube videos and you've been oogling and awing over and you have them on a pedestal and you think that they're incredible. And they are amazing and they're wonderful people. But when you meet them, you realize, oh my gosh, you're human. You're just like me. Your kid's over there having a temper tantrum just like mine. Oh my gosh, we're doing this together. What I love, 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 and I really think this is what kind of turned me on to Plexus and made me feel so safe with Plexus, is all these people, no one's out there bringing their private plane to Kona. No one's out there with their yacht and all that stuff. No one's spending this senseless money. There are people in this business making crazy, crazy money, but they're not being senseless about it. What they do is they pay off all their debt. They pay off their house. The kids' college is paid for, and then they, they give and give and give as much as you can. How incredible is that, that people aren't being silly with their money, and your role models are not being silly with their money. Your role models are making sure that their family is safe, making sure everything they want in life is taken care of, and that's their why. I think it's so incredible that everyone has a why that is so – on a moral level, relatable is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's pretty much my takeaway. Um, oh, I had one more. Sorry. Sorry, Sarah. Um, with the power hour, this one really struck true to me. And I know if any of y'all have kids, this is so true. And if you have toddlers, this is like mine. Um, the speaker said, is your cell phone your cell phone? And that was like someone had slapped me in the face. Because I can't tell you how many times I'm on my cell phone trying to look at Messenger, and Rue comes up and says, Mommy's phone? Mommy's phone? I'm like, okay, fine. You can watch YouTube Kids. Uh-uh. We nix that. Because your phone is your phone. This is your business. This is yours to take charge of. Your family is a priority. But don't share that stuff with your kids. Don't let your kids accidentally, which has happened to me, don't let your kids actually post stuff on Facebook and all your Plexus people are like, I think Rue's on your phone. Could you get Rue off the phone? <laughs> stuff like that. I think that's a huge 
shift for me to realize make it more of an ownership business. So that is what I have to share. I know that was um, kind of a lot, but I hope that, that helped y'all out. No, it's absolutely perfect. And, you know, Amanda. And Rude just walked in the room now, so. <laughs> And you know, this is, is, is something that we can do alongside our families and that kind of thing. But I think that the main, the main uh, theme here that we all kind of taken away is we have to stop the excuses. We cannot use these things as excuses and we have to recognize in our head when we're making an excuse and when it's a valid thing that we have to actually do instead of plexus and that type of thing. So I really want you guys to focus. We're going to move to Taryn pretty quickly here because I know we're taking a lot of time. And um, but I really want you guys to realize that this is like we're in an era right now where if you – it's fine if you're not wanting to go emerald, that's totally fine. Um, not everybody has to want to go emerald, but if you're wanting to go emerald and you're saying, yes, this is something I want to do, we have to stop the excuses and we have to go all in, like all in and do it and, and really, really commit to it and do it. So Taryn, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Thank you so much, Amanda. Hi. Um, Okay, so I'm Taryn Mulcahy, and um, this was really surreal. I, It's kind of crazy to put it into words, just being in Kona. Um, you show up, and definitely Plexus, I mean, we all, we all say it, and from all the events, they definitely spoil us. They pour into you, and it's so crazy, because I remember arriving and showing up at the welcome reception and seeing all these people, like Amanda said, you see on YouTubes that you – kind of have up there as, oh my gosh, and thinking to myself, do I belong here? This is just, this is unreal. And it's, I know it's a feeling in a moment that they've all had. I mean, we've all started with no one, like as just at the very beginning with no ambassadors. And we're all to a point where we have so many ambassadors on our team. But what it's so surreal is just that you get to ask them questions and meet them and talk to them and they're real people. And you just get to um, throw ideas around and just hang out and be spoiled. And it's so, it's so surreal. Um, my husband, Matt, who has not always been the biggest support. Um, he had a really, he loves, loves, loves Plexus now. And he actually convinces me that network marketing is the way to go. Um, when I have my doubts in network marketing early on. Um, but he was like, this is like this company, this is unreal. Like I've been to many, many of corporate events. I've been to many, I mean, we've been to many military events, like all kinds of things. And he's like, I don't understand how they, how they can do this for y'all. And I was like, I don't either, but they're debt free. And so this is awesome. <laughs> um, but one thing that really stood out to me um, was that where we are and hearing everyone talk about where we were last year and just kind of trying to wrap your head around where we're going to be next year, which is going to be so many of y'all and telling myself and thinking that like this truly, truly is the right place at the right time. Hearing personally from Alec and Tarl up there on stage, their vision of the products, where they want these products to go. This isn't the end all be all of our Plexus products, y'all. They have some incredible ideas of what they want to be, to put on the market with the brand Plexus on it and how we want to be different from everyone with our company, our compensation plan. Like they just, they have a vision and it's awesome. And they have huge hearts just to hear them talk, but the right place at the right time really stood out listening to every talk about everyone talk about, well, last year it was like half this size or even smaller, blah, blah, blah. can't imagine what next year is going to be like. It's just going to be phenomenal. And to me, it was huge. I was like, I can't believe all of these people are jewels. And this isn't, this isn't even all of the jewels. Like this is, this is so surreal to me. And, um, it was a great time to really realize that um, we are in a place where Plexus is not a household name. It's not common. This is being on the ground floor of something. And believe it or not, you can set the pace for your business and your journey, and you can go emerald between now and next year. And that's unfortunately not always going to be the case. It's not always going to be as easy to grow your business at this speed and this pace because Plexus is becoming more and more popular. Plexus, the products are becoming more and more popular. Everyone is finding out about them. And the biggest thing I kind of took away is that, um, 
There's so many people who haven't heard of it. So many states that haven't heard of it. It's unreal. So many friends, so many family members that still haven't heard of it. And the biggest one is I was like, if you give it a year, that number is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller. So am I going to be the one to tell these people about it? Am I going to stop being afraid? Am I going to stop wondering about what people think of me? Even at this place right now, like, yes, I'm Emerald, but I still have fears. I still worry. I still approach people sometimes and I'm like, okay, here I go. Um, because it's just, it's fear. It's, I mean, we all have it, but what's more important, getting there and helping someone or being afraid. So this is the time to do it. This is the time to really draw your line in the sand and say, I am going to make this happen. This ground floor opportunity right now, while I still can just take this and run with it as fast as I want to, I'm going to do that. Because if I wait a few more years, it's just going to, it's not going to be as easy. This isn't going to get easier and easier it's going to become a little bit more difficult as more and more people and more and more teams are growing and other people are asking your friends and your family if they've heard of Plexus or if they want to try it or if they've heard of this phenomenal um, way to have um, freedom, financial freedom. And if they want to do it with them, are you going to be that person or are they going to be that person? And that was just really surreal to me because I realized next year, this is going to be at least double. It's totally going to be at least double. That's so many more people. But anyways, um, recruiting, I mean, Kona was phenomenal. We were spoiled left and right. Um, I, this time last year was, I just hit gold and I wasn't really kind of like soaring through the ranks. Um, I was definitely looking up to Amanda and Sarah and Amy and I was like, how are they doing this? I was struggling y'all. I, I remember thinking a lot of times and telling Amanda, like, I just don't know if this is going to work. Like I want this, don't get me wrong, but I don't see how it's going to happen. I remember seeing Sarah's pictures in, Kona, in Maui and it was so, so vivid. I was like, I'm just never going to make it there. I, I, I know that's my mind talking, but I remember thinking that is so far. I, I am just like barely hanging on for gold for dear life. And that's Emerald. Like, I don't even know how that's going to happen. And really, truly the way that it happened. I mean, as the, all three of the people before have said, and there's nothing super secret and wonderful, and I'm not going to have any revelations for you, but I will say um, a lot of the things that I did are, one, when Amanda started growing us as leaders and pouring into us and helping us to see what we don't see in ourselves already and grow that really, really do take on that responsibility. If you have one person on your team, you are a leader and you are telling, you have taken it on to be that person's person. So I like to think of it as the moment you sign up for Plexus, this is no longer about you. This isn't about you and your journey. This isn't about you and your rank. This is about how you can help someone else because you have an incredible gift. So if you start looking at it that way and thinking of, I, I can't wait to share the, I'm going to have to wait to share the product, then that's selfish. That's, that's ridiculous. This isn't about you anymore. What if you could help someone who wants to just sleep better at night and you realize you're sleeping better? You have to really be bold and own it and take it on. If you're afraid of something, I had to really take a big, strong look at all of my fears and kind of look inside and say, why am I afraid of that? A big one is talking to people and a big one was telling people, um, I remember Amanda kind of got on me and she deserved at least deservedly. So, um, I had reached, um, a pretty decent rank. Maybe I was Ruby and someone asked me, I just met a gal and she was like, so what do you do? And I was like, I'm a stay at home mom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Amanda was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring it to say I, I, I do plexus because in my head, I had that fear because I didn't know how to easily say that. I didn't have my my um away, I didn't have my confidence yet because I wasn't prepared. I hadn't prepared myself. I got caught like a deer in the headlights and I was scared and I didn't know what else to say so I said something safe. So that's where you really need to take a look inside. What are your fears? Are your fears afraid of talking to people? Are your fears afraid of rejection? Are you not feeling that you're worthy enough? Do you not know enough about the products? You're afraid when somebody asks you what is Plexus, you're going to stumble and be like, blah, 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 blah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. 
conquer that. Equip yourself. Start learning about the product. Start learning how to talk to people. Get your elevator speech ready. Tell people. Finally, Amanda and Ashley actually said, well, now what are you going to say to people? And they helped me come up with something. So I'm like, oh, that's so much better. And I'm comfortable saying that. I say, I work for an amazing health and wellness company called Plexus, and I help people get healthy and moms stay at home with their babies. That's way better than I'm a Plexus ambassador. Nothing wrong with Plexus ambassador, but I didn't want the first thing I said for people to be like, oh, is she going to try to sell something? I wanted it to be something that I was passionate about and comfortable saying. So now I actually say that to people. But it's really finding your fears and we all have them and that's why we're stuck where we are because we're fearful and we have things that we just quite can't overcome so what's more important to you my biggest thing was um, when I made that first Facebook post after I had told Amanda that I wasn't ever gonna post on Facebook with Plexus um, I definitely wanted to vomit and then I wanted to delete it and then I decided here it is I put this out there to the world so now my biggest fear is failing at this and showing the naysayers that they're right. So I literally said, there is no going back. I will make it to the top and I will do this for myself, for my family. And because I am just competitive like that and I was like, that's, I mean, that's it. There's just, there's no going back. So a few revelations in Kona were, um, with Carrie Wilkerson, she's phenomenal. And if you get to go to Leaders Retreat this year, she's gonna be speaking, and I swear, I would listen to her every day of my life if I could. She was really, really great. She talks about the moment that you start worrying about your points and your business and how your finances is the moment that you have lost control of your business and you have given it to someone else. And this isn't a business when you give it to someone else. You are in control, so you need to take it back you need to recruit, you need to pour into people, and you need to be responsible and take ownership for this because this is your business, your future, your finances, and this is, this is your thing. It's not on the shoulders of your team. It's not on the shoulders of someone else. When you start grumbling and getting mad and frustrated because there's something going on with the company or back office or maybe some credit card issues or maybe recruiting numbers are low or people are complaining, guess what? You are their leader. You are ready to step in, to have a positive attitude, to show everyone that you are not going to let this phase you. And if people still continue to grumble, you might just need to let them and go on your way and say, I'm here when you're ready. This is not about drag, like Amy said, dragging people to the top with you, kicking and screaming. This is about taking ownership and showing them that they can do this and believing in them and pouring into them and showing them the vision, which is really, really big. Um, so a few things that I did really quick, because I don't want to be too long, I'm sorry, are um, one is I um, definitely found my weaknesses, and I had a lot of them, very insecure, do not like talking to strangers, and a little introverted. I get really nervous in crowds. So that was a lot of things I had to figure out how to overcome. I read a lot of books about um, self-doubt and about leadership, and I got a lot more confident. Um, making out a game plan and visualizing. I write everything down. I even sometimes make my own rank up graphics just because I need to personally like see it there. I had a Kona um, screensaver on my phone that I, and right now I have a Sapphire screensaver on my phone. I have to see it and I write it down and I sometimes circle it and I look at it and I visualize it. And I remember hearing a video too of um, maybe Sarah did it or maybe Nikki did it or I don't remember, but it was, um, Think of yourself and what it's going to look like, what that whole picture is going to look like the day that you hit Emerald. Are you going to wake up and have your coffee and your quiet time in the morning because you set that time aside as your time and you woke up taking ownership of your day and then you're going to check into your back office and see how your team's doing and be so excited because it's the end of the month or something and you're going to see your points are there and what's going to happen. Like Just visualize where you're going to be, how it's going to happen. Visualize every single thing about it. The power of the mind is huge I promise you just make sure that you see it in your head and then believe it believe it every single day when Sarah messaged me actually um, in April no February or March in March Sarah messaged me in March or something like that and she said you're gonna do Emerald in May and I was like no I'm not <laughs> I'm way too far and she's like you're not way too far and then she's like you are far granted you are kind of far but you're gonna do Emerald in May you're gonna make this by convention and this is what you're doing and I was like 
well, great. Now I have a goal and I guess I've got to do this. So goals and write it down. I wrote it down. I wore green. I wore my green bracelet. I wore and wrote emeralds on everything. I told, said it out loud. I told it to Matt a million times every day. I said, I'm getting emerald in May. And he's like, all right, babe. I was like, no, this is happening. This is happening. And he was like, okay, this is happening. And I was like, no, no, no this is happening. So make it, believe it, proclaim it, just say it and put it out there and visualize it. Um, a few things that help me too are, um, when you are continuing to recruit and doing your IPAs, I had to get really honest with myself of what an IPA actually is, is that opening Facebook and liking a lot of things and commenting on a lot of things and then kind of following up with one person. That's not really IPAs. You have to get diligent and actually do real IPAs, get that chicken list out write it, write a message to those people, figure out how to do. I saw a new thing that I'm going to do that kind of freaks me out is I'm sending a letter to the boys mother's day out coordinator and be like, Hey, can I send a letter to all your staff? Because I'm really passionate about these products and they've helped so many people's health and um, finance finances. And I just really, really, really want to know if there's something that I could do to help everyone or pray for people who might need something to health or just need more energy. Cause they've got to keep up with my three-year-old and two-year-old and Lord knows that's a lot for me. I bet it's a lot for them. So just be genuine and open and honest and find creative ways to get new targets new people and new people to add to your Facebook add a lot of groups um, I am constantly finding groups of things that I like and adding new friends on Facebook and then finding influential people this was a big one and Sarah and I had a great conversation little mini coaching one-on-one -on -one in Kona about this is um when you're going through and thinking of who you want to recruit, think of why you want to recruit them. And think of big people, big fish in the sea. Think of people who are really influential. And think of why are they so influential. The law of influence is huge. Think of how you are influential, maybe how you're not influential, and work on those ways to become more influential, if that's even just building relationships. But think of those people and contact them. Don't even, don't go just like, hey, have you heard of Plexus? But bring back that friendship, that relationship and get them on board. And even maybe like your friends that are mutual friends with them, get them involved in Plexus in this journey and this relationship. And before you know it, your entire group and that influential person is going to sign on your team. I promise you. And people of influence can make your team grow fast. So, um, I think I have a whole lot more, but those are my biggest main ones. Um, but it was pretty phenomenal and so surreal, y'all. I just, Plexus, this company is is incredible. My husband, who was very, very adamant, I never do network marketing. I, but to hear him talk to people all the time and um, brag on Plexus as a company and how network marketing is like, this legit. He's like, this is great. They don't pay for healthcare. They don't have all these overhead costs. They have people who love these products. They have great products. And it's just awesome hearing him be so supportive because he's learned And network marketing really is, um, I kind of think like the millennials way of, of a job. So we are in such a great place. We're so blessed, um, to be at the ground floor of this and we need to really, really take ownership, take the reins and run with this. So I hope that was helpful and I'll stop that way, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taryn. You had some amazing advice. And I mean, it is absolutely the truth. You hit the nail on the head that we have products at work and we have products that change people's lives. So it's not just all about our ranks and what's in it for us and everything like that. At this point, I think I can speak for everybody on this call. It's also about wanting to genuinely help other people have success in the products and wanting to genuinely impact other families the way that our family has been impacted and to help everybody around us. We know that you guys, every single one of you on this call can get there and can get to a, a place where you're at this life changing income and that you're helping other people. It's just a, a trickle effect. It's, it, it's like that um, stone in the pond and the ripples going out, you know, it, that's what it's all about. And seeing the numbers double from last year went up to this year, it was mind blowing when I walked into the welcome reception. So there were 800 people at the welcome reception, you guys, 800. That is insane. So next year, if we just follow that trend, because there were 400 people last year, if we follow that trend, there's going to be 1600 people at the welcome reception next year. I want you guys to claim a seat. 
there is no reason that other people should be there and you should not. You can do this. It just takes st starting now, you know, making that decision now, prioritizing your business, cutting out the excuses and deciding that you're going all in, but then really figuring out what does all in actually even mean? Like what is all in and finding your way in this business and finding your way to do this because it will happen and people, the numbers will double next year. You've got to make sure that you're in there and that you're one of those people and that your team is one of those as well. I mean, there's no reason that you guys shouldn't be dreaming bigger than just you going. You know, if you're sitting here and you're thinking, okay, I want to do this, I'm going to do this. Who are y'all taking with you? Who's coming with you to Maui next year? It's not just going to be you. I'm sitting up here thinking, okay, first year I went by myself. This year I had four jewels with me. I want to triple that number at least this next year. So why not, you know, why not take more than just you? And it's just, you guys, there's no reason to not. So let's do this. Let's make the decision now. Let's stop making excuses and stop giving over control in our minds to our upline and our downline. It has nothing to do with your upline. Do not sit around and wait for your upline to train you and to do this for you. Do not sit around for your team to start blowing up and exploding without you. You know, that's not going to happen. It's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to yourself and it's going to be up to the actions and the activities that you do every single day. Don't take days off. Don't take weeks off. Don't take seasons off when it gets hard. When it gets hard, that's when you you dig in your heels and you go. So I want to thank you guys so much for being on the call tonight and we will be seeing you in Maui, but I want to see you guys on every single team call and every single opportunity meeting and every single challenge that we do from here on out because we're doing this stuff because we love you guys and we desperately want you guys there. So good night. See you guys soon. Bye.